Hey loves, Maya is here. I am Centrality Coach and today I would like to talk about this phenomenon that when we want something too much, we sabotage it. And I want to share a very easy, fun example that hopefully will help you to understand profound meaning why desiring too much usually suffocates our own desires. And before I share a fun story, I just want to say that when we are in the flow, meaning we are following what feels good, we are following this zest, this um, energy, right? This life force energy within ourselves. And we trusting that if it feels good, and I'm just continue to enjoying this and celebrating this and being grateful for it. It's like you're getting into a very powerful stream, you know, like Niagara River stream, where it's just so intense, and you just in the flow. And the moment when we dropping our attention from this feeling good and feeling inspired and feeling joyous and go into fear and scarcity or attachment to a very particular expectation or the way it has to happen. It's like we're getting kicked out from the stream and we're like falling into a swamp where we're just getting stuck and nothing is happening. So a fun story behind this all. Yesterday, I went to one of the most famous restaurants in New York. I've been living in New York for 11 years and I've never been to this place. And if you are visiting New York and you would ask people what restaurants you should visit, they most likely will recommend you this place. So I decided, well, it's time on this cold winter evening, I would like to go for a beautiful, romantic, delicious dinner. So I made a reservation and I was anticipating for several days, thinking how elegant the place is going to be, how delicious the food is going to be, um, the, um, I don't know, candlelight, the romantic decor, the um, something very beautiful and unique and how amazing it's going to be to have a nice conversation and to be there on a Saturday night. So I created a vision of what is it that I wanted based on the fact that this is just a well-known restaurant in New York. I didn't do research behind it, right? Like I didn't really check. So we show up to the place and we went inside and it looked like for me, it looked like a very big diner where there is ton of people ton of tables ton of noise the hostess is busy all the waiters are running around the metro d is all over the place so when you enter this place you don't feel that you're special and you don't feel that you're welcome right because the place is overbooked and there is ton of people there and you're just one of many who needs to be served. So nobody's really putting their attention to make you feel special or to make you feel good. Nobody's going out of their way. And it's not even a matter of going out of the way. It's just a matter even of energy to greeting you, to smile, to give you attention. None of that is happening. And the atmosphere in general um, is very dry. And that was not something that I wanted. I wanted to feel welcomed. So it automatically um, crashed my expectation. And then we're waiting in line to get seated. And then we're finding a table and it's the outside table and their outdoor space as many restaurants in New York right now have a beautiful outdoor space where they, again, put the design into it. There's flowers, there's decoration, right? Like there's something unique. This is a, the simplest place you can possibly find uh, with not enough heaters, and there are places in New York that have a heater next to you, have a heater for your feet, like that makes you feel cozy when you eat outside, especially winter time. None of this is happening there. It looks like literally the simplest thing ever. And um, they bring us menu and it's a very busy waiters. It's like, here's a menu. Do you need anything? Do you want anything? I'll give you time. I'll come back. So it's very chaotic. 
And the more I sit there, the more I start picking up what is wrong. And the more my vision for this amazing dinner is like sinking, right? It's like I'm watching a Titanic. And my dinner companion is asking me, you know, are you okay? What would you like? Like, do you even want to be here? And that's the most important thing. Uh, one of the most important things that I want to highlight that even me practicing awareness and working with a mindset and knowing all these things, right? Because I got sucked in into my emotional, um, right down the spiral disappointment, I missed the fact that when I was asked, do you want to even eat here? Do you want to go somewhere else, right? I was asked that question. In my head, I'm like, I just want this to be what I want. So I missed the opportunity to acknowledge that this is not what I want to get up and leave in the place is like New York, you have a million of choices and options. So there was a moment in me where I started judging myself for being disappointed, for being cranky, for being judgmental, because I automatically noticed that I'm picking up everything that is wrong with this place, and I have a very long list. But I stayed. I stayed because there was this idea that, like, oh, don't make bigger problem. Don't be, you know, like a cranky baby. You're going to make everybody uncomfortable. Uh, and needless to mention that I did everybody uncomfortable, um, right? The, way, the, the, the waiter knew that I'm not happy. Uh, my partner knew that I'm not happy. Probably people around me knew that I'm not happy. So my idea that if I leave, I'm going to make somebody unhappy was, right, was old conditioning pattern mistake that I picked up, you know, in a, in a, in a childhood, right? The way it was raised. So when we came home and I processed what I experienced, I realized that I actually, because I wanted so much to have a perfect dinner at this particular place, when reality hit at me, I did not have enough agency, right? I did not have enough personal authority to say, thank you very much, but that's not the place I want to have dinner. Right. And then following this desire to have a cozy, romantic, delicious meal, the place would show up. But because of desiring too much, right, when we desiring too much, the expectation is very high. And what is happening if we're not getting what we want, we're getting crushed. And when we're getting crushed and when we're falling into emotional response, right, we're losing this sensation of pleasure, we're losing the sensation of goodness. And then we just continue watching how our desire is crumbling, 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 and crumbling. So I hope that this experience is helping you to understand in this fun, amusing story that when you're desiring something bigger and something more important, that's what's important in this process is to following your own um, sensation, following your own response and thinking about how amazing it will be to have it. Thinking about the abundance, thinking about what you can give and offer, how that would fulfill you, how that would make you feel, right? And keeping your attention on that instead of worrying or, right, thinking about everything that could possibly go wrong. And another thing that I want to point out, when we keep our attention on the growth and expansion, opportunity, creativity, right, positive experiences, then when reality presents itself, right, where there is an obstacle or there is, oh, whoa, 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 that's not what I wanted, right, you think constructively and you can communicate constructively what is it that you like and what is it that you don't like. Because in my story, right, the reason why I didn't want to leave the place is when I go into those patterns, I have stubbornness, right? I want it to be my way. I want somehow this place to be what I wanted it to be instead of as adult understanding, okay, that's not what it is. Let's go find something else, right? So when we fall into those traps, 
we sometimes fall into whatever pattern you have, right? When you feel not so good, whether you're shutting down, whether you're getting stubborn, whether you, you know, pressuring yourself into discomfort or self-abandoning or becoming aggressive, right? Whatever the pattern is, it will come out. So, right, like following this juiciness and life force energy and the zest and desire and, and positive experiences, it actually helping you to show up at your best and think constructively and also communicate your desires. And most important, right, if I'm feeling good, I don't want to make myself feel bad. So I'm going to make choices that would support me in feeling good. And in my example, right, the moment I start feeling disappointed and I give in into the disappointment, it was very hard to measure um, that, wait a second, I don't have to sit here and continue feeling more and more and more and more disappointed, right? I can just say, I don't like being here, right? And just leave. And who cares what I would think? Everybody would be much more happier than me accumulating the discomfort, right? And the disappointment. So... I hope that this share was helpful. Reach out if you have any questions. Um, and uh, if you have any particular interest in topics, feel free to comment. And I will be very happy to put together another video on the topic that you're interested in.